Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Cobb with ZF Performance, and today we're going to talk about loss of hearing and fall risk. Now, if you are new to Z Health, we are a brain based education company. Our focus is on working with doctors, therapists, and coaches around the world. So if you find this information interesting and helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also check out all of our free resources. In my last video, we talked about a growing understanding that loss of hearing is associated with developing dementia and worsening of dementia as people age. We discussed some of the rationales around that. So today what I want to focus on is how does hearing loss potentially impact us in other ways? From a research perspective, one of the things that we are most concerned about now is that loss of hearing is clearly associated with an increased risk of falling. Now, most people go, okay, well, falling is not that big a deal. Well, actually it is when you look at the statistics, regardless of the age group, falls typically rank somewhere from number one to number five in causes of injury and also death around the world. So falling is kind of a big deal. So in our program, we do a lot of work with the visual system, the vestibular system, movement systems in the body to try to not only make people stronger and faster and get them out of pain, but also to prevent falling. Because like I said, it's a big deal. So whenever we look then into the research around hearing loss and falling, it's very clear at this point that with a with every kind of 10 decibel loss of hearing competency, our fall risk goes up. So by the time people have kind of a moderate moderate amount of hearing loss, the risk of falling triples over any kind of given period of time. And in fact, whenever we look at hearing loss and hospitalizations, hearing loss over a 10 year period is associated with a 47% increase in showing up in the hospital for some reason, whether that's a fall or something else going on in the body. We talk a lot about from a brain based perspective, loss of sensation or loss of sensory competency anywhere in the body typically will eventually impact us significantly over time. And that's what we see with hearing loss. So the question is, why would hearing loss create a higher risk of falling? Two primary theories right now. We're still trying to tease all of this out. But the basic idea, number one, is that if we don't hear as well, we are not as aware of what's going on in our environment. So if we're not sure of what's happening, we don't hear a warning sound, we may be likely, more likely to fall on something, trip on something. And that's kind of an obvious idea. If I can't hear well, the environment becomes more dangerous. Now, secondly, and kind of more from a brain perspective, another thing that people have to understand is that basic human functions like walking and standing are not really that basic. In fact, they are highly demanding tasks. They require a lot of different areas of the brain to be functioning well. So whenever we are experiencing hearing loss, what will typically happen is that the brain will need to devote more energy to processing the information that's coming in via the auditory system, understanding it, and then trying to integrate it with other areas of the body, which makes it a more cognitively demanding task. So researchers will basically say that loss of hearing increases cognitive load. And we know from a variety of other arenas that as we increase cognitive load, we see changes in gait, how people walk, and we also see loss of uh, balance control and balance competency. So hearing loss, again, kind of a big deal. We've talked about its association with dementia. And now we're talking about, hey, it increases your risk of following, falling, being injured, and also winding up in the hospital. So the question usually, as I said, uh, that I always get is, well, what do I do about that? I'm a physical therapist or I'm a, a movement coach. How do I address this? Well, you address it via education. You talk to your clients about it and say, look, use an online app, use a smartphone app, test your hearing. If there's some significant differences, right side, left side, or you have any concerns at all, get in to see a hearing professional, see an audiologist, have an appropriate test done. I'm a big believer that as we deal with brain issues, we need to look short term and long term. And one of the biggest things or best things that you can do for yourself as we look at kind of long term issues that may develop from noise exposure in the environment, from brain injuries, etc., is to make sure that our hearing is as strong and as functional as possible. So if you do not get regular hearing tests, at some point it's something you want to consider, particularly if you're noticing that you're having more and more challenges with balance. Last thing I want to bring up right now, because this question always comes up, is do hearing aids then improve balance? Or are there other things that we can do to impact this risk of falling? Right now, the research from the last three or four years is mixed. There are a few studies that show that hearing aids do improve balance, maybe between 13 and 19% for people that are already experiencing hearing loss. And there, then there are some other studies that say, we don't really find that hearing aids have a huge impact on this. So right now, we don't know for sure. Obviously, there's probably some inter-individual differences that are going to play a role in that. 
It is worth testing, however. Now, what else can we do? Well, there are a lot of other things that we can do. The visual system, the auditory system, and the vestibular system, which control balance, are all deeply linked. So one of the things that we regularly recommend and work with with our clients is if we are concerned about hearing loss, we not only make that appropriate referral, we also try to get very busy working on other systems, looking at how the eyes are functioning and also doing a lot of vestibular training because the vestibular system is going to be critical for us in maintaining balance. So from a broad perspective, things that we know are balance exercises, vestibular rehabilitation, movement practices like Tai Chi. Tai Chi has probably been one of the most studied, uh, just kind of basic exercise forms available to improve balance. Uh, those are all fantastic practices as well as strength training. Uh, strength training can make a big difference, again, as a uh, tool to make sure that we are able to stabilize ourselves against sudden, you know, uh, bumps in the environment. Wanted to make sure that, again, we got this out there. Uh, hopefully you found this interesting and helpful. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. Thanks.